Hey everybody, this is Wool Dogga, Ableton Live Certified Trainer. I just want to say thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. Now the tutorial you're about to watch is a full lesson from my brand new Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 course. You can find more information about that by clicking the link in the description. But I also have a free gift for you just for watching and checking out this tutorial. Click the link in the description and you can sign up to get my free Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 guide. All right, let's waste some more time. Let's get to it. Okay, in this lesson, I want to dig into, uh, again, probably one of my favorite updates to Live 11, and that's the macro variations feature uh, about Instrument Rack. So let's head over to Ableton Live. Um, I've got just a piano preset uh, pulled up uh, in an Instrument Rack. This is already racked up. Uh, I have all my controls, most of my controls, rather, mapped to macros. Uh, now that we have up to 16, I probably should go back and add a few more controls here. Uh, but let's dig in deep into this macro snapshot, our uh, macro variation feature. Uh, so one, I'm going to enable or show the macro variation. Um, first thing I want to talk about, let's let's just save my current settings kind of for the state that they're in. Uh, before I do that, I want to talk about, I think, what is probably one of the most important features of this. And it's one just thinking about the idea of what you want to change. Uh, what you want to save like the state of and what you want to be excluded from macro variations. Um, I think features and functionality that would have drastic changes when you change them and those drastic changes when it sound good, uh, you probably don't want to save as a part of a macro variation. Let me just show you what I'm what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and save this state. Then I want to just move uh, this volume down. OK, so we'll put it like halfway. And I'm going to hit new there. So I'm going to trigger um, uh, let's just start with the one we have now okay so it's kind of hard to hear right so i'm going to sustain a chord it's hard to hear let's trigger this one okay you'll notice how that volume kind of drastically jumped up okay now it'd be a little more noticeable with something like a pad or something like that but i probably when i make a macro variation um i probably don't want to save the state of volume i, I want volume to stay fixed right unless I want some sort of kind of crazy control. And, and if so, I just want to be very cognizant and very aware of what I'm doing. Another thing that I think probably you want to be careful uh, of uh, saving the state of is, is likely the filter. Um, you know, again, if you play and then you stop and you trigger a new macro variation, you're probably going to be fine. But if you're going to be triggering while you're playing, the point is just be careful what you're saving. But I'm going to show you in this case, let's go back to volume. Let's say I'm going to delete this macro variation. Um, let's say I, I want to save a new variation, but I want to save and keep volume just where it is. I can right click and I can select exclude macro from variations. So then what this means now is I could uh, darken the tone of this and I could hit new. And now I have uh, the tone kind of where it is. I could go back to this one, which brings the tone up. But you can see it did not change my volume at all. Right. Uh, no matter what my volume is set to, if I toggle this one, or toggle that one, volume is going to stay exactly where I want it. So use that feature. Think about features you want to just kind of save the state of where they are or, or features that you want to be constant no matter what macro variation you're on. Um, that's going to be really helpful. Now let's walk through this step by step. Let's talk about how to create macro variations, how to update them, um, and then talk about triggering them, which that's one of my favorite things to talk about. OK, so let's make a few macro variations. I'm going to delete the ones we have here. It's a really simple process to create these. I mean, I've done it a few times. You probably probably already have it figured out. Um, one, again, I'm going to right click, make sure I've excluded uh, that macro from variations, my volume, which is great. Um, <clears throat> I want to make one that has uh, my tone where it is and has a little bit more compression than I have right now. So let's try that. OK, it's perfect. So I want to save that. I'm actually going to compress it a little more and then I'm going to hit new. So this is going to save kind of the current state of these macros. Uh, this the current variation of macros is going to get saved here. I'm going to rename this by clicking on it. Command R and we'll call this uh, squashed. Piano. OK, I think that's how we spell squashed. Um, <clears throat> now let's create a new macro. Um, I'm going to bring the compression down, bring the tone down a little bit. I want to bring the verb up. Uh, let's bring my verb decay up as well, too, kind of fairly drastically. And then I'm going to save this. OK, and this one is going to be called verb 
Burby piano. Okay, so now when I trigger this guy, this is what we get. Okay, now let's sustain that. We're going to trigger squash piano now. And you can see uh, how easy it is just to save those settings. Now, <clears throat> I will mention we'll dig into a couple other ways to trigger this or to launch our macro variations. But basically, most basically, by just pressing that play button, the launch button on the variation, that's how you're going to trigger it or launch it. Uh, let's talk about how to update our current settings. So I want to launch the squash piano sound. Okay, so there's my sound. Um, I want to darken this up a little. Okay, I want to increase the verb just a bit. Okay, great. Now I want to update this macro variation. Really simple to do. You just press this button right here. It looks like a, a picture icon of a camera. Okay, and I just do that. And now that is updated uh, that particular macro variation. So I can launch this one. Let's go back up here and launch this one. You can see. Okay. And you can see it's super, super easy to update uh, those variations. Now, a couple other things really quickly. Uh, I could duplicate this. So I could right click and do duplicate or do command D, which we're used to. Um, I could reorder these. So literally just drag these around to figure out what order I want them. I could delete them, right, and delete that just uh, just like that. Again, really, really incredibly helpful. Now, one of the ways I have been thinking about macro variations is it's essentially like uh, presets, right? So we have our chain selector that we can use for presets. Macro variation is like uh, saving presets of our macros, right? Um, I'll talk about in a moment, actually in a separate lesson, how I would apply this as a cues player because we can apply this also to chain selector and I think do some really cool things to get some really neat results. Um, let's talk about um, launching or triggering these macro variations because there's way more options than just simply clicking that launch button. So let me take you back in to Ableton. We'll zoom back in on these couple uh, macros that we have. I just wanna make a, a few more just, um, just for the sake of uh, having some different options here. So we'll click new, we call this delay. And then let's make one that takes our verb volume all the way up. Verb decay is crazy. Bring our compression down. Bring our tone down. We'll do this. We'll just call this crazy verb. I don't know that it's actually all that crazy. Okay, so I've got a couple options. The first ones we talked about, first way to launch this, is just launching manually with the mouse. And the way we do that is just click these launch buttons just directly with the mouse, which is kind of nice. Uh, just super simple, but it's not very practical for live performance, right? To be fiddling with the mouse like that. Uh, one of the other ways that kind of makes Ableton a little more main stage ish is we can use our arrow keys up and down and then press enter or press return on our keyboard to launch that variation. So you could just click here and select this and then just switch between all your different macro variations and trigger your different sounds. Um, really, really easily by using arrow key up and down and enter. But we could take this a whole nother way further, a whole whole different step. Um, obviously, doing arrow keys up and down your computer is way better than using your mouse. But what if you have your computer way far away? How can we launch those variations? Well, Ableton has given us tons of options with MIDI mapping. Now, for the sake of a MIDI controller, I'm going to be using my push and I'm gonna go ahead and put my push in user mode. So all these pads just basically are MIDI mappable. So that's how I'm gonna trigger these different variations. Now, because I'm using my push, I'm not also going to play. I guess I could sustain a chord, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna keep this guy in user mode for now, okay? So back over into Ableton, let's do Command M, which is our MIDI map uh, mode, puts us in, the, gives us the ability to MIDI map. And what you'll see is we get a couple new options that show up right below our new button here. First thing we have is this launch button. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign this. Uh, I'm gonna click on this and I'm going to assign this to this top button up here, 
Okay, so that's my launch button. Then I'm going to go back into Ableton, click this uh, down button. Okay, and I'm going to sign this to this button on my push. Then we'll go back into Ableton. We'll click this uh, up button. We'll sign that here on push. Okay, uh, and then let's take this number field right here. And I'm going to sign this to a macro on push. Okay, so we'll assign it to this macro on my push. And then let's go ahead and jump to um, last. We'll put that here on the push, just so you can see. Put that right there. Okay. Uh, and then let's take this last one, this new. We'll put this right here. Okay. So basically, if I walk through what all these buttons do, let's get out of mini map mode. Um, I can navigate up and down these different presets. Okay. So that's going up. This is going down. So we could say, Let's go to crazy verb and then I'm going to press this button here, which I assigned to launch. Okay. And when I do that, it's going to launch that variation. So again, let's go uh, up. Let's press launch on our push to launch that one. Uh, and we can go to that particular variation. Now, I also, if you remember, I assigned this volume knob up here. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is as I turn that, that's going to navigate up and down through all of these different presets, which is great. So that's that's a, a very practical way, again, to navigate between presets. OK, so that's a possibility as well, too. Um, let's talk about, though, this uh, new button that we have in line. OK, so we assign new. So what I could do is go through and change tone, change compression. Uh, if I had my push pulled up and maybe I was using a different MIDI controller, had different variations there. I could actually, you know, move my push. Well, let me let me just practically show you this. Let's go back over to push. Let's get out of user mode. I want to adjust my settings from here. Okay, so open our filter up, uh, bring our, our compressor down a little bit. Let's bring some delay into this. Bring our repeats down. Bring our verb volume down, decay down slightly. Okay, so I I like that preset. Let's pretend I I'm listening to that and I like it. I want to save that as a new macro variation. So what I'm going to do is go back to user mode here. OK, and if I remember my math correctly, this should be our new button. So let's go into live. When I press that, I get a new variation that shows up down there. OK, uh, and so that's a really, really cool functionality to basically, uh, you know, you could manipulate your sound from an external MIDI controller like a push. And if you have that new button saved, you now have a brand new macro variation. Um, that you have saved, which is really, really great. We also have the last button, which when I trigger that, again, if I did my math correctly, should be this one. Let's see. Uh, let's just change a setting. Let's see if we can get back to that. So now there we do last. Okay, there we go. And that takes us back to the last setting that we had, basically the last setting that, um, that was before our previous macro. Um, one other option that we could do if you only had a few particular a uh, few macro variations that you had saved is you could go in, let's do command M again to, to do this. And you could go in and actually launch individual macros. So for instance, let's click this one and just on my push, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a couple assignments here. So I'm just going through, I'll show you in Ableton now and clicking one of these and then pressing a pad on my push. So then now as, let's do mini map mode to get out of that. Now as I go back to push, as I trigger this one, it's going to launch uh, macro variation one, and then two, three, that three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and so that's a really, really helpful and useful way to launch or navigate through macro variations. Um, again, I think it's it's gonna this is gonna just change things for keys players, especially, uh, but people that perform on stage and use instrument racks. This is a whole extra layer of uh, flexibility and control um, that Ableton has given us in Live 11. Now, I want to talk about and take a look at taking this a step further. How do we apply this as a keys player? If you're playing keys live on stage, um, how are macro variations going to fit into uh, your workflow? You know, it probably could be multiple ways, but I want to at least present a way that I think is going to be really helpful in our next lesson. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. As a reminder, don't forget about that free gift that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Click the link in the description to download that for free. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I would love to have you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever we post new content, start a live stream. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody.